Alright YouTube people, my name is Nono and welcome to Game Grind, the only show on the internet that does the grinding for you, except literally every other gaming channel, and truthfully today's episode is going to be much much different than my normal content, and I've been holding off posting this video for quite some time, but with the backlash of the most recent Dead by Daylight DLC that just released a few days ago, I thought that it was finally time. It's no secret that I've been diving back into the long since forgotten channel classic Dead by Daylight. I have hosted a few live streams on my channel as I have acquired footage for the video that you're watching right now. Originally, I was going to be doing a video about how the game is differed from the game that I loved and played back from launch until 2018. In fact, my last upload on this game was December 26, 2018. But, my friends and I who played the game almost daily all agreed that the game had become incredibly toxic towards both factions of killers and survivors, and the developers had done nothing to fix the issues that revolved around the game. That being said, I was an avid killer back in 2018. It is not fabricating the truth when I state that I mained the killers of Dead by Daylight and enjoyed playing them more so than any other survivor. When I quit playing back in 2018, my killer rank was consistently at or around the rank of 8. So not only was I deep into the issues that the game had, I had also been soaking in the toxicity of the environment long enough to become increasingly upset about every aspect of the game. But everything changed when myself and several other killers, ones much more dedicated and as skilled than me, expressed our concerns to developers on a live stream one day. That's when the game's lead designer and director said this. Well, I, I would say maybe try Survivor for a bit, or try something else for a, a week. Try Civilization or something, just for a refreshing change. This was a turning point for how I felt about the game back then. My love of it dwindled, and I knew that I was going to drop it from my habits. So, I organized a little friendly tournament with my friends, each of us playing a killer for one round and the rest of us playing Survivor to close out the series on my channel and give it a final thank you for all the good times, good clips, and how much it had been a part of our college lives. But then, my intrigue grew. And now, in March of 2021, I clicked that desktop shortcut one more time. To see if the game had become more than what it was back then. I stopped playing a few weeks after the Saw DLC was released, and it was the last one that I had purchased. But I dove back into my trap remain to see if the game had become more challenging, rewarding, or anything in between. But, I was met with multiple problems. Before I talk about the major issues plaguing Dead by Daylight in 2021, I want to talk to you about the game and if it had become better, or more specifically, has it become more fun to play on either side of the match. I enlisted the help of one of my best friends and channel cast member Mullet100, and we dove into some survivor matches. While we retained our skills as survivors from our three years away, I noticed that other survivors were lacking in the most basic of common sense skills. And even though I did not know abilities of new killers that had been added since our days away, we escaped them easily. Now this could just be subject to low rank killers and survivors, but there seemed to be a theme of everyone being ignorant of how to do just basic tasks. In our matches as survivors, it seemed that Mullet and myself were the only ones performing generator repairs, consistently landing skill check saves, and avoiding the killer's searches. The survivors we played with also seemed to only be interested in point farming as well. This means anything along the lines of avoiding doing generators to soak more points from the match as a total of progressing characters and buying perks. This is really just a blanket term, but doing alternate tasks to repairing generators gives points at the end of the match, breaking a hex totem with no active hex on it, pulling a survivor off the hook even though the killer is only 15 meters behind you in a chase, effectively giving them two targets and gives the survivor that was unhooking a large boost in points. While this is just a minor problem and changes with each group of survivors and every match, it seemed to be a constant mood for the survivors to go into a match and immediately accept defeat while soaking points from the other survivors' demise. Now my main time back in the game was spent on killer rounds, so I don't have a lot to say about playing survivor. After all, I only pushed my survivor rank to 17 after only 10 matches. Now, in the killer sector, the one that I actually cared about more was ripe with idiots. Not only did the difficulty curve for this game fall off Mount Everest and die in the weeping gates of hell, but the human beings that play survivors in this game are effectively brain dead most matches. I progressed my killer rank all the way to rank 10 while preparing footage for this video, and I've gotta say, I only had about 3 rounds where there are any more than 2 survivors that have gotten away from me. Of about the 50 or so matches that I played as killer, I had 4 sacrifices almost every single game. 
I had a few matches where only a single survivor escaped via the hatch or post closing the hatch, and I only had three rounds that more than one survivor escaped. Is this due to my skill as a player? Fuck I hope not, because in most of these matches I employed the same tactics, with the same trap spots, with the same four perks. I always played Trapper, a killer that the game now describes as easy, and employed the help of my old perk build back in the day, which was Brutal Strength, Agitation, Unrelenting, and Iron Grasp. I never changed my killer or the perks in all 50 of my matches. Whether that validates the build I was using back in the day, or if that validates my skill as a chaotic dumbass, I don't know. But is playing killer fun? Eh, it's a difficult question to answer. I enjoy a challenge. I like to play against players that know what they're doing, what, what, that they're coordinated, they try and fuck with me and actually pull it off. In fact, most matches that I lost, I was fucking ecstatic. I literally congratulated most of the players that escaped me. I wanted that challenge, but throughout my playtime for this video, which was around 16 hours of the experience I was disheartened to see, most of the matches I had ended with ridiculous survivors that would only get two or three generators done before they fell apart. I play aggressively, but Jesus, the survivors I used to play with back in the day were difficult to get a handle on most matches. So I guess that we can just state that the people playing this game have degraded in knowledge since back in 2018, and taking a look at the Steam charts for the PC community, it's clear. That once Dead by Daylight rolls out a new patch, the player base takes a massive hit. The most recent game-changing patch was released back in October of 2020, and in that time, huge changes were made to the game, including animations, perk fixes, debuffs, buffs to virtually every aspect of the game. It was not met with kindness either, as a huge dip in players, as well as a massive boon of negative reviews from players with over hundreds of hours in the game, some even thousands of hours in the game. Now keeping this in mind, let's move on to one of the most serious issues this game now has. It's the washing machine cycle of money they have placed on this fucking sham. For those of you either not familiar or ones blessed to not know the horrors of this reality, let me tell you. Dead by Daylight has turned into a cosmetic driven shitfest. When I knew that game back in the day, you would pay for DLC for new content and outfits, but it would be a minimal amount. The 80s cosmetic case is an example of that. For $2.99 you would get new outfits for almost every classic survivor character, and when you purchased a new DLC, you would get a survivor and a killer as well. They used to even host events that would give you exclusive in-game cosmetics, but now I, I truly don't even know where to start. Let's just start with the RXLs, the in-game currency that they've released to the public. For nothing other than cosmetics and in their featured section the ability to purchase a killer or survivor character that you don't have, but only specific ones. Normally I wouldn't have any problem with a system like this, I would just say something along the lines of no point in buying cosmetics from this store, but that would be for a game that was free, or a game that didn't have regular DLC updates. If you implement this system into a game that already costs money, it, it's, it's fucking scum worthy. Let me lay this out for you. Dead by Daylight costs $19.99 on the Steam store. And on a good day, you can catch it on sale from somewhere around $10. But let's not forget that a new player that wants to begin playing Dead by Daylight in 2021 would probably want to dive in at full capacity. There are now 19 DLCs for this game, not including the DLC packs that only give cosmetics like the previous mentioned 80s case. Each of these DLCs range at full price from $4.99 to $11.99. And if you were to buy all these DLCs because you were dedicated to giving these developers all the money that they think they deserve, you would be out an entire $124.82. Excluding the base game price and the tax on that purchase, as well as leaving out the DLC cosmetic only packs. So if you wanted all the content that you can get from Dead by Daylight, you will easily be out an entire $150 for simply wanting everything you can get out of this game. Now, let's go back to talking about the RXLs. The developers of the game that have already expected you to buy the game at its full price, or more, at that $150 mark, want more. 
Our Excel packs start lowest at $5.99, and they have installed an epic battle pass system for even more cosmetics that no one fucking cares about. And I'm not kidding, I only saw a handful of survivors wearing cosmetics that I could track down to an RXL purchase of some kind. So the folks that have expected you to pay that full $150 have installed a battle pass that costs an additional $10 to get all of those useless cosmetics that they have put all their time and effort into instead of fixing some of the issues that some of the players have been speaking and screaming about for years. Now I have not been deep into the Dead by Daylight culture for quite some time, but even I can tell that the long-term players that once loved this game are falling out just like I did over three years ago. Dead by Daylight isn't a game anymore, it's, it's become a cash cow that the developers are now milking for as much as they can get out of their player base, especially since a huge new surge in players have posted negative reviews, mostly from players that I've already mentioned have over a thousand hours in the game. If that isn't enough to tell you that the veterans of this game have been pushed out and shamed for even playing the game at launch, then I don't know what will. Battle Pass systems are fine in games that are free or have a singular charge for their game, not in games that want you to already spend a decent chunk of your money just to play it. Another thing that pisses me off as a player rejoining the community is seeing this archive challenge shit. Now, at first glance it looks like a rewarding system for new players to practice simple skills or to go for a certain challenge, but then you progress down the line a few challenges and realize that some of the challenges have to deal with purchasing a specific character to perform an action with, which is bullshit. They do the same thing with some of the perks as well, and all this really does is give you a damn small chunk of blood points to spend on character progression and some shards to progress down that already $10 battle pass. But now you can't continue unless you purchase that $7 DLC to earn that challenge. Not to mention that these new RXL cosmetics aren't even slightly impressive in any way. I don't see why the developers at Behavior think that this is an okay thing to do. They've already been cited multiple times as being defensive, dismissive, and just otherwise ob oblivious of their game and their game meta and how their game works. I swear to God, the developers at Behavior don't play their game before they put these patches out that destroy the community. And this happens several times over a long course of areas. One of the most specific examples I can give you is that back a few months ago, I can't give you a specific date, but one of the developers at Behavior was live streaming Dead by Daylight, and one or many of the people that were watching the live stream were asking about a specific type of mode called colorblind mode, where you could turn on colorblind mode and the colorblind could play the game better because there's, there is a lot of different colors that go on, especially for indicators and other items in the game. And this is what they were met with. It's getting really boring just blabbing about colorblind mode all the time. We've heard it a million times. We know. Continuing to, to badger us about it isn't going to change anything. If it gets done, it'll get done when, we'll, when we have time to do it, or if somebody decides that it's something should, that should be done. You know, we, we know that a lot of players want it. We know it's not a small number. We get it. I don't understand why this man had to be so cruel in his response to a chat, but if that isn't a good example of how defensive and dismissive that this group can be, I, I don't have a better example other than the one that killed my interest in the game all those years ago. I will say this from the bottom of my heart, and I mean every single word. Mm -hmm. I think we've done a pretty good job so far. Oh, yes. Well done. There we go. Okay, so, I'll be the judge of that in two years' time. <laughs> These comments don't come from a man that is filled with blind rage, but instead from a man that's watched a friend grow up and make all the wrong choices. And even after parting ways and seeing them years later, growing even further in your disappointment of them. At launch, Dead by Daylight had problems. But the community highlighted them, and then they were fixed. At one point, the developers at Behavior even stated that the game is in more in the community's hands than our own now. But seeing what this game has become four years later is just fucking abysmal. 
Dead by Daylight is a completely unique experience. A 4v1 asymmetrical horror game that has never been replicated across any other console or game. It is truly a magnificent experience, but it is being spearheaded and ran by a bunch of defensive, dismissive people that do not want to acknowledge the faults in their system and instead would rather roll out new characters and new perks that would fix or cancel out certain ways of playing. And that is just not how you do a good game. Especially since a lot of people are starting to catch on that they are recycling killer perks and killer abilities through multiple other DLCs. What I mean by that is that certain new characters have similar or exactly the same abilities as ones released previously. The best example I can give you is the pig killer can sneak and do a dash strike whenever she comes out of her sneak. Ghostface can sneak and can stalk people to gain the exposed status on those survivors. What Ghostface is as a character is the pig and the shape mixed into one. You have the sneaking from the pig and you have the stalking of Myers or the shape combined into Ghostface. That is 100% not a new character. The originality of the developers has decreased and diminished heavily. If you were ever interested in this game, just don't. The game is unique, like I said, but I can speak from experience that these developers don't care about you. They only care about how much money they can get out of you before you get wise. This game's player base has diminished to a point where it takes almost 20 minutes to get into a match because nobody wants to play as the killer anymore mainly because they have no real power over the survivors anymore. Why would four victims of the murderer queue up before the murderer himself? Well, it's because the game's busted and nobody wants to play as the killer, because the killer always loses now. When a game is dying, it enters its final form, which is usually manifested as a cosmetic-driven monster. Don't give these developers any more of your hardened money. They'll just put it to a new cosmetic and then they'll use that cosmetic to farm your money over again. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I really do appreciate it. If you guys agree with my opinions, post down in the comments below. If you have an alternate opinion to mine, please also post down in the comments below. I'd love to have a, a running discussion with you. These are just my comments of looking down the barrel of the gun and seeing what the game is doing. I don't know if it's because I've had such an outside view on the game for all these years, or if it's just the fact that I dove back in and found all these issues almost immediately, but this game, is, it's dying, guys, and I don't have any other way to communicate that to you, but I wanted to talk to you guys about these topics because I care about the game, and I, in a way, love the game, but it's, it's not the same. And I don't think it ever will be. Thank you again for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Again, tell me what you think about this episode down in the comments below. I'd love to get in a discussion with you. And I will see all you know bros later. Peace for now.